Chapter 21 of Holes. It was a long walk back to his hole. Stanley looked out through the haze and heat and dirt, the other boys lowering and raising their shovels. Group D was the farthest away. He realized that once again he would be digging long after everyone else had quit. He hoped he'd finish before Mr. Sir recovered. He didn't want to be out there alone with Mr. Sir. He won't die, the warden said. Unfortunately for you. Walking across the desolate wasteland, Stanley thought about his great-grandfather, not the pig stealer, but the pig stealer's son, the one who was robbed by kissing Kate Barlow. He tried to imagine how he must have felt after a kissing Kate had left him stranded in the desert. That probably wasn't a whole lot different from the way he felt he himself felt now. Kate Barlow had left his great-grandfather to face the hot, barren desert. The warden had left Stanley to face Mr. Sir. Somehow, his great-grandfather had survived for 17 days before he was rescued by a couple of rattlesnake hunters. He was insane when they found him. When he was asked how he lived so long, he said he found refuge on God's thumb. He spent nearly a month in the hospital. He ended up marrying one of the nurses. Nobody ever knew what he meant by God's thumb, including himself. Stanley heard a twitching sound. He stopped in mid-step with one foot still in the air. A rattlesnake laid coiled beneath his foot. Its tail was pointing upward, rattling. Stanley backed his leg away, then turned and ran. The rattlesnake didn't chase after him. It had rattled its tail to warn him to stay away. Thanks for the warning, Stanley whispered with his heart pounding. The rattlesnake would be a lot more dangerous if it didn't have a rattle. Hey, caveman, called Armpit. You're still alive. What'd the warden say? asked X-Ray. What'd you tell her? asked Magnet. I told her I stole the seeds, said Stanley. Good going, said Magnet. What'd she do? asked Zigzag. Stanley shrugged one shoulder. Nothing. She got mad at Mr. Sir for bothering her. He didn't feel like going into details. If he didn't talk about it, then maybe it didn't happen. He went over to his hole, and to his surprise, it was nearly finished. He stared at it, amazed. It didn't make sense, or perhaps it did. He smiled. Since he had taken the blame for the sunflower seeds, he realized the other boys had dug his hole for him. Hey, thanks, he said. Don't look at me, said X-Ray. Confused, Stanley looked around, from magnet to armpit to zigzag to squid. None of them took credit for it. Then he turned to Zero, who had been quietly digging in his hole since Stanley's return. Zero's hole was smaller than all the others.